It's the Fort Hayes State University Coaches Show on Eagle Community Television, brought to you by Eagle Communications. Hello once again and welcome to another installment of Tiger Talk. This is Gerard Walbrock. We'll be joined, joined shortly by head football coach Chris Brown. Tigers season opener didn't go quite as planned. They lose to the Broncos of Central Oklahoma 26-7 in their opener last Thursday. Fort Hayes State uh, will be back on the road, the first road game of the season, coming up this Saturday afternoon. They make the trip to Tahlequah, Oklahoma, their first ever conference meeting with the Riverhawks of Northeastern State, who lost in a shutout fashion at Pittsburgh State in their season opener Saturday night. Tiger Talk again presented by the fine folks at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes, where the fire's always burning. Of course, you can always check out their half-price appetizers Eight until close every night of the week at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine, where the fire's always burning. We will take our first break. When we come back, head coach Chris Brown will join us when we continue right here on Tiger Talk. Hi, I'm Gerard Walbrock, voice of the Fort Hay State Tigers, inviting you to join me for Tiger Talk. Airs Monday nights from 6 until 6.30 on Tiger Radio Mix 103, and then the video replay on Eagle Cable Channel 14 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We'll talk Fort Hay State football with head coach Chris Brown, preview the last game, and look ahead to the next week's action on Tiger Talk. Monday night, 6 till 6.30 on Tiger Radio Mix 103, and on Eagle Cable Channel 14. Welcome back to Tiger Talk. Gerard Walbrock joined by Fort A. State head football coach Chris Brown. The program again brought to you by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, where you can ask for the steak and lobster or the steak and crab leg special. Some of the great menu items at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine, where the fire's always burning. Of course, you can always catch if you uh, the, the video replay on Eagle Community Television, Channel 14, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So we invite you to uh, check out that on on ECTV. Head coach Chris Brown joins us and obviously not the start you were looking for on uh, on uh, Thursday night against Central Oklahoma. Good crowd and uh, boy just things didn't click especially on the offensive side of the ball was really a struggle. Yeah it was. It was a great crowd. I was very pleased with the you know the community coming out and supporting us. I just wish we could have given them a better <laughs> show than what we did. Um, you know we just we just struggled on both sides of the ball. I felt on offense we just couldn't really get the timing down. You know going back and watching film you know we're, we're a step away from catching a touchdown pass, uh, a block away from breaking a long run, you know, and it was just little things that got us beat. And you know, I know we're a better football team than what we put out there on the field, you know, last Thursday. And uh, I know our kids know that; those know that they can perform at a higher level. And uh, you know, we just got to do a better job of getting to work this week and um, really focusing on what we need to do to get better as a football team. And uh, you know, hopefully, we bounce back this week and, and really perform to the level we should perform at. With as many people back on the offensive side of the ball as you have, are you surprised? I mean, even though it is the first game, but th those little things that the timing was off with, with so many guys back? It is. You know, it, like, you know, you go get your scouts all week of practice, and it's not real quick tempo like you think you're doing, you know, but then you go against, you know, offensive defense are still going against each other about 10 or 12 plays, but that's not enough to get, really get you prepared for game mode and game speed. and. Uh, you know, I was surprised. You know, I figured, you know, we'd come out and, and perform, you know, at a high level, perform the way we were supposed to perform. And I figured we'd put at least, you know, 20 to 35 points up on offense and defensively, you know, you know, try to keep below 28 is kind of our goal. And, uh, you know, we didn't do that. You know, and it seemed like early on it was penalties initially that hurt you. You got that stop after Central moved the ball a little bit toward midfield. Kind of got pinned deep a little bit, but moved the ball a couple of times. Looked like you are going to get out of the, the shadow of the goalposts a little bit, but then you had a couple of key penalties on that opening drive, and it seemed like after that, that kind of set the tone. You know, penalties, it's always kind of been, you know, the thorn on our side. We always have a penalty that, that costs us, you know, a first down or gets us backed up. and. Uh, you know, it's something we talk about you know, to our, with our players all the time. You can't have stupid penalties. You can't make stupid mistakes. You can't turn the ball over on offense. And defensively, you got to create turnovers. And we didn't do any of those things, you know, on Thursday. And, uh, you know, these kids got to bounce back this week and go to work and, uh, you know, go get a W this next week. You know, it's funny you mentioned penalties because traditionally you've been one of the fewer penalized teams in the conference, but it's the key one at yeah. the key time. You don't usually have a lot for a game. You don't have a lot of yards. But it's that key penalty at the yeah, wrong time. It's always at the wrong time for us. It <laughs> seems like, you know, you'll have ones every once in a while that'll hurt you a little bit. It seems like, but for us, 
So it's like a third and five. We get the first down, all of a sudden we get a penalty, 15 yard penalty. So now it's third and 20. And, uh, you know, it's hard to bounce back and get third and 20 when third and five is pretty manageable. Can I ask you about Ed Smith, uh, senior running back? He got upended and injured on the very first series of the ball game. How much did, did that affect your game plan? I know you're deep at running back. Didn't appear that it changed too much of how you guys approached it. No, we're pretty deep there. You know, I wish we still had him. It's mm -hmm. his senior year. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to see how he progresses through this week. And, uh, Hopefully we can get him healthy. You know, he needs to be on the football field. He's a very explosive kid. Um, does some great things, you know, for our offense. And, you know, he's one of those guys that could break it at any time. And uh, so we got to get him back on the football field. A few other guys got banged up. I know Tomas Malesi took a, took a shot. He was a little, little woozy. He had several mm -hmm. guys go down. Anything significant or a good chance to get most of those guys back? I think most of them will be back. You know, Tomas, he's, you know, had a concussion, <laughs> but he's concussed all the time, it seems like, anyway. <laughs> but, no, he's, he'll be back. Um, Joita's, you know, his shoulder's fine. And I think, you know, but just minor bumps right. and bruises. Things that, you know, when you play 80 snaps a game, you know, you're going to have some – bumps and bruises that, that are going to you know, give you some pain. So, uh, you know, we we'll should get those guys back this week. And you mentioned defensively. I know uh, they were out there so long, and it's probably hard to get a true sense because it seems like when you're playing that many minutes, I mean, you're going to lose some of the technique and it gets a little, little right. bit sloppy. You did hold them to four field goals and, and just the, the two touchdowns. When you factor in, they had to be on the field for 81 plays and over 40 minutes of the game. I mean, you still see some signs defensively that could be pretty good? Yeah, I think we could be good defensively, really good. I mean, we have nine seniors, I believe, you know, on that side of the ball that's, that has played for us. And, uh, you know, when I watched film, it was tackling. You know, third down, quarterback would scramble, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we would take a good angle, and it's the things we work on in practice every day is when we're tackling, attacking the inside hip, making the tackle, and we weren't doing the little things right. and. Uh, I know when you get tired, you know, those things kind of go away, but, you know, with the group of kids that I got, those things shouldn't change. You know, our techniques and fundamentals shouldn't change how tired we get, you know, and that's something we got to stress our kids even more this week. And it was kind of interesting because I thought early on you were making some good tackles. They got the ball to Marquez Clark, their outstanding senior wide receiver, had some good one-on-one -on -one open field tackles that prevented big plays, but it seemed like it was the quarterback who really gave you the fits. It was, and you know, he was he was really impressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, mean, I didn't know how well he could run, but he, he runs very, very well. And, uh, you know, you never saw him really drop back and pass and, and go for a deep ball. And he has more play action, and when he did drop back and pass, he was looking to run or looking to scramble and, and throw the ball downfield. But, uh, you know, I think we can do, you know, we can just do a better job of tackling and, and, and keeping him contained into the pocket, and, uh, you know, we would have been fine. Well, the Tigers come up short to the Broncos of Central Oklahoma. We'll talk more about the ball game as we move along and also preview this coming Saturday afternoon. It's one of only two games on Saturday in the MIAA. A lot of Thursday night action this week, but we'll do that as the program continues. Uh, of course, Tiger Talk presented once again by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes. Back with more at head coach Chris Brown right after the break. Welcome back to Tiger Talk, presented this evening by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill at 3203 Vine and Hayes. They have the quick and easy lunches from the prime rib sliders to oriental chicken wraps to melty, cheesy Philly cheesesteak, all starting at $5.99. Of course, the half-price appetizers, 8 till close every night of the week at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill. 3203 Vine and Hayes are locally owned and operated. Whiskey Creek, where the fire's always burning. Gerard Welbrock, head football coach Chris Brown, as Fort Hayes State tries to regroup after a season-opening loss to the Broncos of, of Central Oklahoma on Thursday night. And uh, your post-game comments afterwards let you made an interesting comment about you know maybe it has to look in the mirror I know it's only one game it, it's week one but everybody very confident going into that opener that they were going to win didn't happen and kind of the way it happened maybe a chance for everybody to look yeah. in the mirror and get refocused they do they you know they're very confident you know very poi I mean they just you know they feel pretty good about the, themselves and the things that they were doing but you know really when I feel like when we stepped on the football field uh, we, we played a little tight mm -hmm. you know I didn't feel like we were the same guys that I see, you know, in practice every day, having fun, enjoying themselves, and doing the things we need, you know, ask them to do in practice. And, uh, you know, I see we seem tight. And, and then you take a look at self in the mirror and see, you know, you know, how bad they really want this, how successful they want to be. And uh, hopefully they come back today for practice and, and they're ready to go. Third down, a bit of a problem last year. It was obviously a big problem, both offensively and defensively on Thursday night. Defensively couldn't get off the field on those third downs, and offensively couldn't extend the drives, which led to 41 minutes of time of possession right. for the Broncos. It is. Third downs are huge. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter what team you're playing. And, uh, 
any coach will tell you that, any team will tell you that. It's third downs. You know, you got to be very consistent on third downs offensively and, you know, get first downs and, and you know, just control the clock and control the ball. And then defensively, you got to get yourselves off and get the offense the ball back. And uh, we preach it, preach it, preach it, but, uh, you know, the kids have to do it. What about the play up front? I know veterans really on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, seemed like as that game wore along, Central Oklahoma kind of controlled the line of scrimmage. They did. You know, they really did. You know, I just didn't know if it was, you know, we started losing lack of confidence or, you know, not feeling like we could get the job done. But, you know, these group of kids, I've seen them play too, you know, for too long. Mm -hmm. you know, I've seen them for three or four years now. And, uh, you know, they're very good football players and we're very strong up front. And, uh, you know, that needs to be the, the core of our offense or in our defense is, is our front lines, you know, because they're great players, they're strong kids, physical kids, and uh, we need to start establishing, the, you know, that front line. Turnovers, obviously a key, and you look when you had your success a year ago, you guys were very good in the turnover ratio, wasn't good on Thursday, didn't force any turnovers, and that's always key. It is, and that's something we talk to our kids about all the time. You know, we want at least three turnovers a game, you know, as our goal on defense, and then offensively not turn them in, turning the ball over. I'll even take a three and out, you know, turtle run downs, you know, as a turnover as well. And, uh, you know, we didn't do that. We were very early in the game, we popped one out, we didn't get the ball. And uh, if we would have got that, I think things would have been a different story. Well, and that key turnover on that drive, you, you brought in Kevin Spain, moved the ball down the field, and, and uh, it, it was close whether or not the ball came yeah. out. I guess bottom line, they ruled it a fumble. But yeah. it seemed like from that play on, it, you guys had a different team out there. It was. You know, it just seemed like it all deflated. We were done, you know, at that point. And, uh, you know, as a team, you can't allow that to happen. You know, you you got to be mature. You know, we're going to face adversity. And how are you going to react when you face adversity? And, uh, you know, we did not react the way I thought we should have. Tigers come up short. They'll take on Northeastern State this Saturday afternoon in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. We need to squeeze in another break. Program brought to you by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes, where the fire is always burning. More Tiger Talk coming up right after this. Welcome back to Tiger Talk. Gerard Welbrock, head football coach Chris Brown. The program presented by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill. And as always, ask for the honey buddy with your honey butter with your complimentary bread at your table. Always a nice uh, little treat at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes, where the fire's always burning. Tigers fall to Central Oklahoma. A little bit more on that game before we peek ahead at this Saturday in Northeastern State. Um, I want to ask you about the quarterback, not to create a quarterback controversy, but Travion Albert had a, a rough start, the returning starter. You you made the move to Kevin Spain and it seemed like he moved the ball until that fumble we talked about. Mm -hmm. He had a couple of nice pass completions uh, and then the second half it was a struggle for everybody involved. Uh, what's your approach this week w with the quarterback situation? You know, we just got to find out which what they do best. And uh, I think we've got a pretty idea, good idea of what they do best. You know, Travion's you know, great in play action, gun run, you know, those type of situations. Kevin's more your, you know, zone, you know, handing off the ball for zones and powers and then a good drop back passer. So, you know, we need to attack this practice to see what we do best, you know, and what's what's best for our team, you know, this week. And uh, you know, everyone do everything they can to get both those guys on the ball. If it is Kevin, then we got to find, a, you know, ways to get Travion on the ball. He's just too good an athlete to be mm -hmm. sitting on the sidelines. So, you know, we got to do some things to make sure that we keep him involved and, and, and keep him on the field. But, you know, we don't know yet, but we're kind of working both ends just kind of see what's going to help this team out the best. Do you mind if it's a two quarterback attack or do you prefer to have one guy be the guy out there? Yeah, I don't mind it. You know, uh, both kids can do things that, you know, at, at, to their potential. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one's better at one thing and the other one's better at the other. And, uh, you know, as a defensive coach, I would hate to try to, you know, game plan for two quarterbacks. You know, you got this one who does this and you got this one who does this and now you got to prepare for both of them. And, uh, you know, it makes it tough as a defense. And, uh, you know, who knows? You know, we'll probably mm -hmm. do a little bit of that just to, you know, just to mix it up and, and see which one's going to give us the best rhythm and how we're, you know, and what, maybe one's doing better in the game than the other. And, uh, you know, we'll just run with it from there. What about preparation? How does that affect the team if you're preparing? Not, I wouldn't say two different game plans, but obviously two different styles. Does that make preparation for your own team a little bit more difficult? Or is no, that something they, they can handle? A little bit. I mean, it's stuff we've already done anyway. <laughs> you know, right. most of the plays are the exact same, so it doesn't really change much for us. Um, it just... You know, Kevin will run these plays and, and Trevion will run these plays. And offensively, it doesn't really change, <laughs> you know, what the receivers or the, or the linemen are doing as well. Kicking, I want to ask you about that. Uh, J.P. Maciel kicked uh, the one extra point. Unfortunately, he had one uh, attempt and he kind of switched it off. I know Drew missed the long field goal. Is that kind of the approach, J.P. for the short stuff and maybe Drew for the longer stuff? Yeah, we just felt like, you know, that J.P. has been more consistent, you know, from 
you know, the zero to about the 20. It's been, you know, more JP's range. And then from there, it's been, you know, Drew, uh, you know, with the strong leg that he does have. So, uh, you know, Drew's going to do a kickoff. He's going to do a punch. He's done a really tremendous mm -hmm. job for us, punting the ball. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of how he's kind of taken that role over for us. But, uh, you know, it's you compete for every job. And uh, you know, that's what we're going to continue to do. And, uh, you know, but, you know, that's kind of where we're going to kind of attack that kicking game. Well, Drew, a 78-yard punt tied for the second longest in school history on uh, Thursday night. Good to to see that and uh, JP as we mentioned hit that uh, extra point and a little bit of special teams I guess fortunately you had a, a good special teams play DeAndre James the uh, kick return for the only score of the night for your yeah. squad uh, I know he'd been battling a bit of a hamstring issue during uh, camp good to see him back because he had a pretty good year middle on returning last year good to see him back and get a good one yeah it was good to see him do that and I can tell it's like well at least his hamstrings healed yeah. up finally because you know we've been needing that kid to be back on the football field and uh, you know, he sees it. He understands our return game very well. And, uh, you know, when he sees that seam, he's going to hit it and he's going to go. And, you know, when we had him last year, he did a great job of, you know, at least getting 25, 30 yards every time he touched the ball. So and he just only continued to make us better in, the, in our kicking game. Tigers set to take on the Riverhawks of Northeastern State coming up Saturday afternoon. We'll take our final break and take a preview look at the one of the newer members of the MIAA. Tiger Talk presented by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes. And we're back with our final segment right after the break. Welcome back. It's our final segment on Tiger Talk as we talk football with Fort Hay State head coach Chris Brown. The program brought to you by Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes, where the fire is always burning. A couple of thank yous, Auto World uh, Used Cars and Hayes for providing ground transportation to the Tiger Radio broadcast crew again this year. Uh, great selection of uh, pre-owned vehicles on the lot. They have on-the-spot financing. You can buy a car with your credit card. Stop on by. They're open seven days a week at 722 East 8th and Hayes Auto World, where they really do make buying a used vehicle fun. And also by Phase 2 Team Gear and Screen Printing. They are the official apparel provider for our Tiger Radio broadcast crew again this year. Phase 2 Team Gear and Screen Printing. Get your gear on. Fort Hayes State in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Saturday afternoon. It's the uh, MIAA TV Network Game of the Week. One of only two games this Saturday in the MIAA. Everybody else is playing on Thursday night. And it'll be your first look at the Riverhawks since they joined the MIAA. In fact, for Fort Hayes State, first time the two have hooked up since 1990. And that's when they met in Tahlequah. So obviously a lot of unfamiliarity somewhat going into this ball game. Yeah, I've never been to Tahlequah in my entire life. I didn't, couldn't even tell you where it's at. It's near but, Tulsa. Um, yeah, there's no easy Tulsa. way to get there. That's all so, you need to know. <laughs> But no, uh, and the, you know, the cool thing is, it's one of my coaches I used to coach mm -hmm. with when I was at He's now the new head coach there in Rob Robinson. But uh, you know, when I watched him on film against Pitt State, they're a very good football yeah. team. And, uh, and, I, and I think that's something our kids got to understand is, you know, it doesn't matter, if, like last year we started out with Emporia and Washburn and the big, you know, Northwest and West. It doesn't matter who we're starting with now. You know, UCO, um, Northeastern, Lindenwood. Those are still very, very good football teams, and you got to be prepared to to, to, to be ready to uh, compete every day. And uh, you know, hopefully, we can continue to do that. But you know, Northeastern is going to be a great game. They're a good football team, very good football team. Yeah, and not to say that your team was overconfident and took that first game for granted, but it it almost felt like they just it wasn't one of those top four or five teams and we're going to be okay going into it. Hopefully right. that is a, a, an awakener for this squad to bring that point you just mentioned home. Yeah, if not, we'll make sure that it gets taken care of today in practice, you know, make sure that they understand that, you know, we can't take anyone lightly. And, uh, you know, maybe that's kind of what we did this, this first game. You know, I knew that UCO was going to be a very good football team. I know Northeastern is going to be a very good football team. I know Lyndon was going to be a good <laughs> football team. You got to approach each game as you know you're playing the best team in the country, and uh, that's the only way to prepare for a team. You mentioned Coach Robinson. The fact that you coach with him, like I say, gives you an advantage. But obviously, you've got a pretty good knowledge of how he thinks a little bit. Does that help at all in game planning and just having a general idea of what you might expect? You think you know those coaches? You don't never know those coaches. <laughs> you, you, do, you know you think you got an idea, but you know, you know what they're going to run, but you just know no, you don't know when mm -hmm. they're going to do those things that they're going to do, but. You know, he's a good friend of mine. He's, he's a great person, and he's got a great family, and uh, it'll be good to see him. You know, and you look at that game, they lose, what, 37 nothing to Pittsburgh yep. State. It was 17 nothing before some of the fans hit the sleeve. They got blitzed early, but yep. then second, third, and even part of the fourth quarter was pretty even football. After they settled down, yep. they did a good job on both sides of the ball. And, you know, and I was watching the game. I was you know, the same way as everybody else did. I was like, you know, this is a pretty good football team. I mean, Pitt's, Pitt's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, 
The score's 37 nothing. I mean, that just says something to Coach Robinson and his staff of what they've done with those kids in a short amount of time because they're a good football team. And, uh, you know, there's a few plays in there, you know, they, they probably should have scored. So, you know, you're looking at probably a 37-14 game, a 37-21 game, you know, pretty easily if they just, you know, did a few little things right. And, you know, they'll work on those little things to get them right. What impressed you about them? I know they got a, a junior college transfer quarterback, big kid who uh, seemed to hold his poise pretty well. A couple of running backs and a look like a pretty good group of wide receivers they worked in. Yeah, they do. They're they're very impressive. I mean, they're good group, good sized kids. They got a nice tight end. You know, the quarterback is very poised. I mean, he doesn't seem to really get flustered in the pocket. And uh, you know, it's two. They got two running backs that are very talented kids and. You know, the wide receivers, I mean, they run good, they, they block very well, and, uh, you know, it looks like a typical, you know, Rob Robinson, you know, team where their kids are going to play physical and they're going to play hard and they're going to be coached very well. And, uh, you know, defensive side of the ball, too, you know, they got some great kids and some guys that, you know, run to the ball well, and then they got some, a great blitz package. So, you know, we're going to be ready to play, and, and we're going to share everything up this week and make sure that our kids know exactly you know what's going to happen to him on Saturday. You know, for so many years, Fort A. State football really struggled on the road. It seemed like last year really turned a corner. You guys played some of your better games away from home. Maybe the fact it's a, a road game uh, Saturday might be exactly what you need. Yeah, it probably is. Just get a little more in tune with what we're doing. You know, when you're in home, there's so many distractions. When you're on the road, I got them all the time. You know, I got them on Friday night. I know exactly what they're doing Friday night. Where, you know, when you're at home, you don't know exactly what they're doing, but. You know, our kids need to get locked in and get in tune, and I think we'll be okay. All right, sounds good. Coach, as always, we appreciate it. I know you're a little underweather uh, today, but we appreciate you uh, sticking no out and getting the program in. We will see you Saturday afternoon and hopefully much better results after the Tigers take on Northeastern State. I hope so, Gerard. Thank you. That is head coach Chris Brown as the Tigers head to Tahlequah Saturday afternoon. It's a 2 o'clock kick, and coverage on Tiger Radio Mix 103 begins at 1 with the Auto World pregame show. That is going to wrap it up for Tiger Talk. It is presented once again by the Hayes Med Orthopedic Clinic or the Hayes Med Orthopedic Institute, Taco Shop, GNL Tire and Automotive, Golden Belt Bank of Hayes and Ellis, Adams Brown, Barron and Ball, Couture for Men and Women, BTI, and James Motor Company. And of course, as always, presented by the fine folks at Whiskey Creek Wood Fire Grill, 3203 Vine and Hayes, locally owned and operated Whiskey Creek, where the fire's always burning. For head football coach Chris Brown, this is Gerard Welbrock. So long, everyone. It's the Fort Hay State University Coaches Show on Eagle Community Television, brought to you by Eagle Communications.